On Tuesday, May the 8th, four mothers of children with cancer from across Canada came to Toronto to unite in the fight against childhood cancer. Two of them are joining us now, Cody Francis and Kerry Wall. Both of them shaved their heads for the Mom Squad Challenge, which raised much-needed funds with awareness in honour of their child's cancer journey and the 10,000 children battling cancer in Canada today. Welcome to the show. Thank Thank you. you. We had a fabulous time because I was uh, very privileged to be able to emcee that event. And I think we talked about the fact that on paper, when you, when you, when somebody reads that, the facts that one in five of those children die, um, you read it and it registers. But being at that event and hearing your personal stories about what you went through and and what it's like resonates to the point, like, I mean, I was fighting back tears, everybody in the room, and most people didn't succeed in fighting them back. And it's amazing to us, to both Kate and I, who are very involved in the community, that we didn't know that there aren't funds dedicated to research in terms of childhood cancer, nor is there a push for clinical trials for childhood cancer? And I don't think, if we're not aware of it, it was total news to me, that most Canadians are aware of it. And this is a message, I think, that you're trying to get out. That's right? exactly right, yes. Um, only about 4% of the money allocated to cancer research goes to childhood cancers. So it's very, very minimal. Um, our kids' lives really are dependent on fundraisers. Like this one, like this one. Mm-hmm. Well, well, let, let let's hear a little bit about um, about your stories. What happened? So, Cody, you're a single mother of five from Maple Creek, Saskatchewan. Yes. Okay. So, you shaved your head on behalf of your son William, who was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia in 2014 at just four years old. Tell us about that. April of 2014, I just started noticing odd things like. He was getting tired. He was pale. I just thought maybe he had low iron because mm-hmm. my eldest son had the same thing happen. But then we started noticing the petechia and the heart to wake up, the night sweats, the nosebleeds. And then we just made a quick call to our family doctor who was able to get us in. We got some blood work. We He's like, well, this is a couple things that could be wrong. He, low iron, one of them, which mm-hmm. we all thought mm-hmm. was. And then he's like, well, the, because he had had a cold for so long, too, that maybe something's wrong with his white blood cells. Because like, sometimes when you have an overextended cold, that it affects your blood mm-hmm. cells. But then that wasn't the case. I got a phone call on our drive home and says, can you pull over to the side of the road? You need to go to the hospital. And that's when we got our news. That he, at the hospital medicine hatch, he had said that your kid, your son might have cancer. We're waiting to, for it to com- be confirmed with Calgary. And then we had to wait. We had to make plans quickly, according to the doctor, and get stuff started. And the first, like, May was just a blur. Mm. And he was on treatment for 38 months. We're coming up to our uh, almost our year off treatment, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. And But we still have a long journey with our follow-up appointments and things like that. For the first two years off treatment, we have to go every two months for blood work. And the third year, we go every three months and then he gets his heart monitored every five years, mm-hmm. uh, heart checked. And then we're after the three years is up, we go yearly until he's 18 at the Children's Hospital. Tell us what it's like in terms of the impact on your whole family, because this is never just about one child. This is about everybody. At the time, I only had four children. Um, my oldest now suffers from anxiety issues. Uh, he, even if we're gone for a couple hours and he doesn't hear from us, he's constantly texting, are you okay? Where are you at? Um, he's, we're seeking help for him t- with that. Um, William's younger brother, John, uh, he wants to be sick because that's how he knows he gets mom's time or family time. Because if you're sick, then everybody comes and helps you, right? Mm. And my girls are just too young to remember anything. 
So, Carrie, you're also from Saskatchewan. Yes. Um, you shaved your head on behalf of your daughter, Haley, who mm-hmm. sadly passed away from cancer when she was just 13. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your journey, if you can. Um, well, Haley was 13 when she was diagnosed. She had leg pain that was for probably close to a year. Um, we brought her to doctors, physiotherapists, chiropractors, massage therapists. We did all kinds of things. Uh, everybody just said it was growing pains or it was a dance injury because she loved mm-hmm. to dance. Um, when we brought her in, she had flu-like symptoms for about a week. Um, and we brought her in because I, she was having trouble breathing, so I thought she had pneumonia. It had turned into a pneumonia. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we brought her in, they admitted her to emergency immediately, uh, did a CAT scan, and it revealed that there was tumors around her lungs as well as a tumor in her pelvic bone. But this was a fast-moving cancer. It was extremely aggressive, yeah. She passed away three months later. What was that? I mean, I I don't even know if you know what that was like. You must have gone into complete shock. Yeah, you do, and denial. (laughs) I remember when the doctors showed us the, the CAT scan results and they showed us the tumors, I just remember thinking, well, this is impossible. That can't be what I'm looking at. Like, it's impossible, not my child, you know. So the mom squad, what's it like having a, a group like this to, to support you? It's amazing. I loved it. Like, <laughs> just to find somebody that can relate to your story. Mm-hmm. Like, in Saskatchewan, I found it hard to find other families. But then to come together from with women across Canada, I've had a great time considering the circumstances that we've come together before. Mm-hmm. I think one of the things that people don't realize is that it's... it's uh, <sighs> It's such a multifaceted set of issues that comes with that diagnosis. Uh, as you were talking about other children, uh, their reactions, fathers who go to work to make sure there's the bills are paid and feel left out because they're not at the treatments and they want to be there with their child. All kinds of things. Guilt um, that you're not spending more time with other kids. And so the childhood cancer group, I think, really sort of help you address all those or connect you with the services that you need, right? Yes. Yes, Yes, they do. So how did they help you? Specifically, this has helped me with the after fact right now, because when your child's going through it, you don't think about anything else. Like, you don't care about yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't care if you have a clean house or nothing, because you're always living Like, you have to go, like, everything's an emergency. It's just, like, it's kind of a breather to know that we've all made it through. Right. What would you want every Canadian to know? That childhood cancer is not rare. It's actually common. It's the number one killer of children over any other illness and disease in this country is cancer. Um, One in 285 children get cancer. So if you think about your school, how many kids are in your school, your child's school? I mean, how many kids are going to get cancer just this year, are going to be diagnosed? The group needs money. They need the, money yes. for research. It's childhoodcancer.ca slash mom squad. And people can donate by going to that website directly? Yes. $30,000 was yeah. raised. That's good. But, That's but wonderful. more is needed. More is needed. Not only the money, but also the awareness, because Canadians are hugely generous. Mm -hmm. And I just think, I mean, I think we all agree that people just don't know the fact that there isn't research, enough research being done, and that there aren't Mm -hmm. clinical trials being done, and that this has been an overlooked area of cancer. They think they give to the Cancer Society, but that's not, those funds are not trickling through. And this will specifically go to... To childhood cancer. Exactly. exactly. Childhood cancer. So again, the website is childhoodcancer.ca forward slash mom squad. And there may be a dad squad next year. <laughs> right? That's a great idea. <laughs> well, they're talking about it. I think the CEO was saying they're going to think about it. But thank you both so much for being ambassadors, for being heroes, for raising awareness, and for coming and talking to us and all our listeners about it. Mm-hmm. And I know that this will resonate with everyone out there, and hopefully we can uh, we can make this happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh,